U.S. China. Uh, oh, sorry about that. U.S. China chip controls. Dan, you and I were both burning up the uh, the uh, video uh, news services. Uh, I was on CNBC twice talking about this. I think you were on multiple ones. TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did CNBC within an hour of each other. Yeah, you were on the one show and I was on the next show. How about that? One of these times we got to get them to put us on together. I mean, it really does feel like the 6-5 joined CNBC. John Ford, make it happen. You know Come what I on, mean? Come on, John. Like, you can do this. On, John. You can do this, dude. No, but uh, hey, let, 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 me, let me do the rundown here. So uh, there was an article uh, written, I think, by the Wall Street Journal that said uh, the Biden administration was going to provide higher levels of scrutiny they're already putting higher levels of scrutiny on companies that do AI training and inference. And so people, as you would expect, uh, brought up NVIDIA and and talked uh, and talked through that. So um, what we're looking at, and, and I just want to put this in, in context here, this is really a, a 20 year conflict. OK, 20 years ago. Uh, China uh, pretty much banned IBM and Cisco and even Microsoft from critical infrastructure. And they still ban uh, Google, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and I'm pretty sure uh, WhatsApp. So it's really an asymmetrical relationship where you had China banning all these companies. And then um, U.S. banned Huawei and ZTE for uh, military reasons. And then the Biden administration this year banned 59 companies uh, who uh, sell to the U.S., but also are a key supplier to the Chinese uh, military. So uh, an interesting conflict going on, but nobody should be confused that it's 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 new. It's it, it's not. It, it's actually uh, like I said, it's it, it's 20 years old. If you want to really put it in uh, in 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 context, so um, I, I think we're kind of in a standoff. And and what that is doing is that's it impacted in, Nvidia a little bit, but uh, not a lot. Uh, Nvidia's uh, uh, CFO came on and basically said, "Hey, not really a big hit here uh, short term." She did make a really good point, which I do agree with. Is I'm hoping we are balancing the military element or the uh, public safety, U.S. security with the fact that China is going to, you know, if, if we ban certain semiconductors from China, they're going to go and try to develop their own. Now, China has been trying to do this for a long time. In fact, I licensed China when I was at AMD with x86 technology. Now, it was 46 technology, but still, you could take that and do, they did nothing with it, okay? And that's because the U.S. companies like AMD and Intel and ARM were just moving way too quickly. So, um, uh, you know, here we are in this standoff, but China will continue to invest. Uh, I can see them figuring out the designs. The one thing that plays into this is can China get leading edge? They, they can't get leading edge right right now from uh, the highest performance uh, chip making equipment company. So China might be able to design it, but can they actually make it? Can China do generative AI? Yeah, they can, but probably at a 10x less efficient way of doing it. They have to probably throw 10x the hardware at it to be able to do what U.S. Uh, chip makers uh, can do. Oh, and then there's the software. But uh, I think that China could create its own software uh, ecosystem if it wanted to. If nothing else, it, it has millions more developers than uh, in the Western world. So I left you a lot of oxygen in the room, Dan. Go for it. I like you you self-proclaim whether there's oxygen in the room. I think you did a pretty good job of covering a lot of it. But uh, fortunately, the fun part here is this is very subjective. It's very qualitative. This is not a necessarily a spectrum in right wrong. You know, there's a lot of ways we can all sort of chew on this. And I'm kidding, buddy. You always you're, you're always the host with the most. I would argue that you're the world's best moderator. Well, no, I think that's already taken by Jason. So. I think he trademarked it, but 
I think I'm proclaiming you're the best. He proclaims it about himself. So just think about it. Remember that, Jason, when you're listening to the 65 you. pod. Um, in all serious, though, we did have a quite a media circus, Pat. This stuff always fuels a lot of interest. This is what the, the, the world wants to hear about. It wants conflict. And there is conflict here. And this is not driven by AI, but it's been reinvigorated. It's always triggered by something. You know, yeah. it was triggered by supply chain. Uh, you know, then it was triggered by the CHIPS Act and the desire to start to build a more resilient supply chain around the world. Um, and then in this case, with the power that we know AI is going to have over industry. So there's two basic arms races. There's the legitimate in military industrial complex of arms race to be the most powerful and have the most capable national defense ecosystem in the world, which the US and China both seek to have. And then the second one is there is the power of money and industry. And the United States has the, you know, the United States and China are, are, are boxing in any given day for the number one, number two economies in the world. China has, uh, you know, shown over the past decades that it can quickly close the gap on the U.S.'s, uh, you know, economic, global economic standing. But the U.S. has long enjoyed some technological advantages that come from largely the Silicon Valley of what we've created, what we've built. And yes, we have created some risk through outsourcing a lot of the manufacturing to Taiwan, which is a, you know, is a territory in deba of debate. Let's just put it that way. Uh, the way the, we in the West see uh, Taiwan and the way the East sees Taiwan is not the same. And, and that's the, you know, thing about kind of the myopia that people have in this world is all of us here in the U.S. Uh, and, and even some of the chip makers, and Pat, you and I have talked to a lot of executives at times, it's almost it's almost with hubris that they kind of think that everything's kosher and Taiwan is going to be fine. That's right. And then, and then there's uh, this irony kind of in the East where they're, you know, it's kind of almost like, you know, they're just sort of waiting, uh, lurking, watching, and just, you can't help but kind of just be nervous that the decision could come at any time to uh, reclaim what the East believes is its, it, it, its own. And of course, almost all the leading edge is produced there. So that's creating a lot of friction, a lot of tension that the U.S. Um, and uh, both China are fighting for. So you look at like the Micron situation and, and, and what an interesting decision for China to kind of go after Micron. And, and here's my thesis. And Pat, you know, they've done nothing to actually validate the claim. They just kind of blo blocked, made a decision. And I feel like they almost picked a company that was in an area that China has the most capability to, to do on its own. Like, yeah, we'll go after the memory, folks, because we can do that. You know, and, and I would argue Micron has some really great innovation that China uh, and it's, it, it's the companies like SK that they have relationships with that they continue to get uh, volume from yield uh, can make well, a lot of mistakes. And they have their own, you know, and, and they, they have their own. And they yeah. Have their own. yeah. <laughs> but having said that, going after like an NVIDIA is too risky because China can't do anything right now to compete with uh, the U.S. on an AI without having access to NVIDIA chips. Now, they don't have access to the A800 or the most advanced chips, but they still want to be able to get the legacy stuff because the legacy stuff that they are still able to get beyond the is still better than anything they can manufacture there today. That is true. So yep. they do not want to pick a fight where they cannot compete. So they do randomly are sort of saying, here, let's do this microaggression and go after a company that's kind of more nascent to us where we can get what we need from other channels more easily. And of course, don't be dumb society to think that China doesn't have ways to work around chip controls. <laughs> They're still finding ways to get the, the most advanced technology into the country. It's happened. It's happened for generations. <laughs> this is not the first time. I'm not proclaiming, Pat, you look like you want to say something about that. No, I'm just agreeing. I'm, yeah. I'm agreeing with you and I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, you can backdoor, people have been backdooring banned stuff into China forever. Now, when they get caught, it, it's super ugly, right? We it saw is. what happened when um, Huawei was accused of funneling their technology to Iran. Uh, they literally jailed um, the head of, of Huawei, the daughter of, of one of the rotating CEOs for like two years, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this isn't something to take lightly. I'm just pointing out it's a very complex, subjective, qualitative debate that needs to be had 
These are additional controls. And let's just be candid. The most powerful country in the world for the future of the semiconductor industry is the Netherlands. So you can go smoke your weed and drink your coffee and you can wait for the Dutch to basically make the final decision. on. Come who on, most- man. Tell us, tell us all why that's the case. Well, I know why it's the case, but tell everybody. Because sure. these next ASML holds the keys. The only manufacturer that can, can enable the EUV to be able to go to these smaller and smaller process nodes is ASML. We've actually weaponized the Dutch and they're the most powerful country in the world. And right now they're on our side, but they, it, China will just they are more powerful than yeah. Joe Manchin. They are literally yeah. more powerful right now than Joe Manchin. They can literally decide the winners and the losers. I don't think anytime soon they would they would be defecting to, to support the Chinese. Uh, yeah. And as long as the demand stays this high in the U.S. and in Taiwan, everyone from NVIDIA to to, to uh, Micron will be fine because the demand locally will will augment and offset and allow for growth, even if they are losing 20 or 25 percent. 